Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about five things which you should never do in your turbocharged car. And as you can tell we are in my 2014 Subaru STI which has a 2.5 liter turbocharged engine. Now the first thing I want to talk about is not running your car hard until you've let everything get up to operating temperature. And you know you may think uh, the common misconception you can just look at your coolant gauge and see that it's reached you know it's operating temperature and you're good to go. Well the thing with that is your coolant actually rises is much faster than your engine oil typically because you've got a thermostat which closes off the engine block and so by closing off that engine block you can heat up the engine coolant very quickly and regulate the temperature within the engine block your engine oil however has to circulate through the oil pan so you've got a large reservoir of oil which you need to heat up and so long as that oil isn't at operating temperature it's not going to flow as fast as it will at operating temperature which means you're going to have less uh, protection and so it's critical, you know, especially with turbocharged engines, where you're sending oil through that turbocharger, which is going to be spinning at insanely high RPM. You want to make sure that you have proper oil flow through everything in order to ensure that you actually are protecting everything well. So, you know, this is going to be different for every car out there, but typically I would just say, you know, wait a few minutes extra after you've seen that your engine coolant has reached operating temperature before you really just start to hammer on your vehicle. The second thing I want to talk about is not to immediately shut your engine off after you've been running your car really hard. And so what happens in these scenarios when you run your car really hard, you're going to have these spots such as your turbocharger and other areas where you're going to have really hot areas. And so when you shut your engine off, you shut off oil flow. And so you're going to be leaving oil sitting next to these really hot areas. And so that oil that sits next to these hot spots, what it does is it starts to burn up the lighter end of that oil, leaving behind a thicker oil. And it also starts to break down that oil, leaving behind a thicker oil and so as you thicken that oil it doesn't have the flow characteristics which it initially had uh, which are desirable and so that means you're going to need to be changing your oil more often and as well as that you're going to be having a little bit more wear as a result of not having as much protection and so you want to make sure that you know you let your engine cool down uh, you know just kind of cruise don't get into your boost and let that engine oil drop down in temperature cool off those areas that are really hot so you don't break down the oil as much uh, you know once you've been out there running it hard now the third thing I want to talk about is you should never lug your turbocharged engine so by lug what I mean is giving it a high load at a very low engine RPM so your engine RPM is very low let's say you're in fifth gear at a thousand RPM 1500 RPM and you floor it so you're getting a lot of boost uh, but at a very low engine RPM this is kind of a dangerous condition and there's really three reasons why you don't want to do this so the first reason is essentially you're putting your car at a huge gearing disadvantage so you're asking for a lot of power at an engine speed where it can't make that power and so the smartest thing to do is to just downshift uh, and that way you have the torque at the wheels in order to compensate for it and you can produce more power and accelerate easily you know you may notice some vibrations things like that uh, when you're in this condition the second thing is, uh, especially true with diesel vehicles, is in these scenarios where you're trying to make more power, uh, your engine may say, okay, well, let's inject more fuel, but it can't ingest more air because it's at this really low engine RPM. And so as a result, you inject a ton of fuel, you're in a really uh, rich mixture, and this really rich mixture goes through your exhaust. So, you know, you can burn up your catalytic converter or, you know, damage your exhaust system if you have, you know, different systems, of course, for diesel engines. But you're going to be sending all of this fuel out the exhaust. You're going to be getting poor emissions. Um, and you may see some black smoke out the exhaust as a result of this uh, in these conditions where you're at a very low engine speed but a high engine load. So you're trying to get a lot of boost at it. Now, the third reason why you don't want to do this, and I think what people are most interested in, is the fact that you actually can damage your engine. So there's something called low speed pre-ignition which can occur in these small turbocharged engines um, at these high load low engine rpm conditions and so what happens is you actually have ignition far earlier than when your spark plug ignites it so you significantly advance uh, your timing of your spark and you're not doing this in a controlled manner. And so when this happens, uh, you can damage your engine significantly. You can crack pistons, you can uh, you know, destroy the spark plugs, things like that. And so this can't be controlled simply by advancing your timing or retarding your timing because timing occurs after this. So it's, uh, it's kind of a unique condition um, and it seems to be more of a modern phenomenon with these small turbocharged engines when they're at high load and low engine RPM. 
And so the reason why it occurs is a bit unknown. And, you know, I want to make a separate video kind of exploring some of the hypotheses that are out there as far as why this occurs. I mean, there are some, you know, good scientific journals out there that kind of explain why this happens, uh, but it's kind of a deep subject. The whole point is if you're in a turbocharged car, and you're at a low engine RPM, you don't want to run high boost in these scenarios ever because you could run into this low speed uh, pre-ignition condition and significantly damage your engine. Number four, you're going to want to make sure you're always buying the best fuel you can buy. And this is especially true for modified turbocharged engines. And so in these scenarios, you know, you, you just want to minimize knock. You want to minimize the probability of blowing up your engine. Here we've got some big sticks in the road. So when I say you want to minimize that, there's different ways you can go about it. You can retard the timing, you can run a really rich uh, air fuel mixture, uh, you can reduce the boost, but you know all of these are basically going to be reducing power uh, to an extent. And so what you want to do is find that ideal area and allow for your engine to make the most power. And so the easiest way of doing this is just giving yourself the best fuel you can get. Um, so running, you know, an 87 octane or, you know, the European equivalent of an 87 octane uh, average knock index. So you guys use a different system, but regardless, don't use the lowest gas out there. Use the highest gas out there, highest octane rating you can buy. Uh, and as a result of this, you're going to be minimizing your risk for having engine knock. And finally, number five, as we get into some corners here, uh, and this one is just why I have an excuse to talk about slip angles, but you don't want to floor it when you're coming out of a corner, especially in a turbocharged vehicle. So what happens in, uh, you know, how do you have a stable vehicle? Well, a stable vehicle means that your front tires and your rear tires have the same slip angle, essentially the same slip angle. If one of them becomes greater than the other, if the front's greater than the rear, you have understeer. If the rear's greater than the front, you have oversteer. And so in a turbocharged vehicle, as you're coming out of a corner, the way you increase, um, essentially in all vehicles, the way you increase the slip angle of a tire is by increasing the loading. So if you accelerate, if you brake, or if you corner really hard, what you're going to be doing is increasing the slip angle on that tire. Now in a turbocharged vehicle, as you come out of a corner and you, let's say you floor it, what happens is, especially with cars which have turbo lag, is you're going to be waiting and you put your foot down and it may not slip out and then all of a sudden that turbo lag is overcome, you send all that torque, let's say, to the rear tires and now you've sent a significant load to those rear tires. And sending that significant load to the rear tires greatly increases just the rear wheel slip angle. And so when you do that, of course, that means your rear tires slip angle is greater than the front and that means you're going to oversteer. Same happens in a front wheel drive vehicle, the only thing is you start to slip your front wheels and so you start to understeer. And so it's kind of a dangerous condition with turbocharged vehicles. You want to make sure you're really progressive with your modulation of the throttle coming out of a corner uh, because if you're not and you just kind of floor it, you're going to find yourself sliding, uh, you know, in, in an uncontrolled manner, uh, you know, and, and possibly in a controlled manner if it's a rear wheel drive vehicle and you know what you're doing. So you can certainly have some fun with it, uh, but if you're trying to be safe or if you're trying to get the fastest lap time, you want to avoid just kind of flooring it and making sure that you don't understeer or oversteer your vehicle coming out of a corner by overloading those tires. So thank you all for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Hello everyone, and welcome. In this video, we're gonna be talking about five things that you should never do in a 4x4. And cool enough, I'm gonna be in a different 4x4, either truck or SUV for each one of these. So the first point I wanna talk about is going to be on pavement, and then the rest of them are going to be off pavement. And so for this first one, I think most people know that if you use a locking differential for either the front or the rear, 